Hello, beautiful people. It is I, Vamila Evergreen here. Now, my pronouns are he, him, but if you got something juicy to tell me or you rooting me on, girl is an exception. And welcome back to another episode of Tea with V. <laughs> Misers, you know what time it is and I know what time it is all right it is time for some hot chai topics all right so come on in come on in get your teas ready to get your snacks all of that good stuff because we have a lot to discuss now our first chai topic comes a bit of a surprise oh yes Rihanna finally put out some brand new music oh yes oh yes but it's not what you think it's not her new album quite yet we don't know if that's gonna still happen sources say that it happens but i'll believe it when i hear it all right but what we do know is is that rihanna is producer of the upcoming black panther two soundtrack so we know that she's doing that she recently released a single from the soundtrack uh, it's called lift me up now in my personal opinion I don't think it's like, you know, it, then again, it's not really Rihanna's song. It's, you know, for Black Panther. So, you know, maybe there is some influence of the movie that is in this song. So we know that it's probably not her personally singing about it, if you know what I mean. Um, it's more of like storytelling, you know, within within this uh, film. But to me, I it's not given what it's supposed to give, you know, and I think maybe her real single as Rihanna and not Rihanna with this particular soundtrack in the song um, is really doing it for me, you know? And I love me some Rihanna music and I can't wait for her Super Bowl halftime performance. But this Lift Me Up song, it's not its not giving what it's giving. And you know, we're happy regardless that, you know, the true Navy fans is what Rihanna calls her fans of the Navy. Uh, congratulations for surviving the Rihanna drought. Um, but you know, you got a little something with this song and you know, it's a cute song, it's a moment, but it's really not giving what we really want, which is a club banger okay we, you, we're waiting for that moment now maybe this is just the calm before the storm maybe she's just like listen i don't have a baby i don't have a successful business let me just ease on in before i really give it to you so hopefully you're going to give it to us but in the meantime congratulations rihanna for finally putting out a song in six whole business years all right so let me know what your thoughts are do you love the rihanna song i want to know in the comments below now from rihanna back into the studio to Andy Warhol's studio being up for sale for $10 million. Did you hear about this? Yes, yes, $10 million. Now let me read this to you because I found it on the on the internet, on the interwebs. Um, so Andy Warhol's Upper East Side Studio building hits the market at $10 million. Uh, the Upper East Side building that housed Andy Warhol's first studio in the early 1960s is on offer. Warhol created some of his death and disaster paintings there, as also depictions of Marilyn Monroe um, and Elizabeth Taylor. Now the two-story building dates from 1910 and it's about 5,000 square feet. So that's up for grabs. Now, if I had the means, I would definitely be on this. To be in the oasis of Andy Warhol's legacy and his paintings and all of that, I would kill to get that apartment. Easily, I would totally do it if I had the means, which I don't. You know, I'm blessed enough that I'm able to budget on this damn studio. But um, overall, whoever gets it, I hope that, you know, you are a Warhol fan and you're gonna preserve some things or maybe who knows, someone's gonna buy it and make it into a museum. We don't know. But from what we know, it's for sale. And if you have it, go ahead and get it. And feel free if you watch T with V, bring me on a tour. I would love to film that journey. 
Now from Andy Warhol's studio being up for sale to Nancy Pelosi's house being burglarized, did you hear about this? Oh my goodness. Now, I don't follow politics by any means. You know, I just watch what I need to watch and then I, you know, the only news that I'm watching is E! News, you know what I mean? But what I recently heard about the news about Nancy Pelosi's husband who brutally got attacked by a burglar and was struck in the head by a hammer. Through on the head, I guess on the show, like he was really, really injured and really, really, really messed up. Obviously, from what we're reading, from what I'm hearing is that he's now in emergency surgery and uh, Nancy unfortunately wasn't there. And um, this is really, really sad and devastating all around now. I just, I'm very shocked that there was no security and that it was just easy to break in, I guess. And, you know, if, if now if you know you're gonna be in the public eye, to any degree, especially if you're being in the public eye in politics, you would think that you would carry some type of security. Now, security is really expensive, don't get me wrong. Last time I heard about how much a security cost is like 3,000 an hour, something like that, something crazy. But, you know, if you budget properly and you have the means, stuff like this won't happen. Now, the gentleman apparently has mental health issues, what is new, and he's obviously taken into custody, but, Oh my goodness, poor Nancy's husband. You know what, I'm sending you light, love, and positivity and healing energy because I can only imagine getting struck by a hammer. Who, like, what is what is the world that we're living in right now? So all in all, prayers to you and I hope you get a speedy recovery because it's very, very unsettling and very awful and no one deserves to get struck in the head by a hammer. Hammers are no joke, trust me, I know. Now from Nancy's husband getting struck by a hammer to poor, 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 set off getting struck by a bullet from a gun. Hi, Vomizers. Sorry to interrupt. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. But as I'm editing this episode right now, I didn't realize that I keep mispronouncing the gentleman's name and his name is Take Off. And I keep calling him Offset because I'm getting, you know, his brothers confused and everything. So my apologies on that. His name is Take Off. And I'm just gonna put a little, I'm just gonna keep putting his name wherever I keep messing it up. So my thoroughest apologies. And uh, yeah, so I now realize that I was effing up his name. So you spare, spare, spare it in the comments. Um, but um, hope you're enjoying it so far and back to the video. This just happened literally about like 48 hours ago as I'm filming this um, offset unfortunately passed away November 1st uh, due to uh, a gunshot. Apparently he and a bunch of crew were partying at a bowling alley and I guess there was some uh, situation that happened. I guess somebody was making fun of Takeoff. It's just overall sad in the hip hop community. Like I don't understand why people are carrying guns and just shooting people for no reason when your feelings are getting hurt. You know what I mean? Like people just take things way too seriously to the point where I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna take your life because you looked at me wrong, I'm gonna take your life because, you know what I mean? It's just very, very sad and the man was only 28 years old. My prayers go out to his family and especially I can only imagine to the amigos and, and all of that and they were all really close family and it's just, it's very, very sad that they had to go down like this other thing too before I move on to the next segment now the police have been trying to find uh, people who were around the shooting because a lot of people fled the scene and they don't want to talk to the police but yet they'll go to TMZ for a quick cash out to give exclusive stories about what had happened and also too, people need to be charged for um, uploading videos of people who are deceased you know, I was, I, it, it, I can't unsee, you know, the poor guy's dead body with a pool of blood and, 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 and a brain uh, splat. It was just very, very graphic. And, you know, unfortunately it's going around on Twitter. You can actually see Takeoff's deceased body and it's just, it's very disturbing. And I just don't understand why, why someone would, 
go out of their way to take a video of something like that and post it on the internet. If you're so willing to take a video, take a video and send that shit to the police. You don't need to be posting that on social media. I don't understand that. Now, unfortunately, that's how the world works when you're literally a celebrity. People want to see the rise of your stardom and the death of, you know, what you're, you know what I mean? It's just really, really disturbing, very sad. Overall, again, thoughts and prayers to the family. For those people who were in that scene, please go to the police and speak about what happened so there is justice for this poor man. So, yeah. Now, okay, so we're moving right along in our next segment, which I love to call sipping on some TikTok tea. So let's get to it. Oh, yeah. All right, so our first TikTok tea video is by the user at Aaron in the Moon, and they discuss about how Gen Z is more gayer than the previous generation. So, uh, roll the video. Generation Z is gay. No, really, in a recent poll just released by Stonewall and Ipsos, they showed that only 50% of Gen Z is attracted exclusively to the opposite sex. 24% of Generation Z reports being lesbian, gay, or bisexual. I'll also say that millennials aren't really that straight either. Only 61% of millennials identify as exclusively attracted to the opposite sex. I want to also point out that over 12% of boomers identify as lesbian, gay, or bisexual. This is a groundbreaking development in how people identify because just a few years ago, only 4-5% to identified as LGBT. The poll also shows that 3% identify as transgender or non-binary. This is up from around 0.5% a few years ago. And just overall, it's incredible to see so many people feeling more free to be themselves in public. I think it's important to realize that despite all the laws being passed against us, we have the numbers. Ooh, now I find that quite interesting. I don't know if you did too. I think, you know, overall, I definitely believe that my generation, Gen Z, and I, I feel like I'm on the cusp between millennial and Gen Z. I'm a Gen Z that grew up with millennial toys and millennial TV shows and all of that. So I guess that counts. But um, I definitely agree. My generation is definitely more queer, more gay, or more open, more expressive and all of that. And I'm here for that. Like I, I, we, listen, I am good with not being around people who are suppressed by their sexuality. But that study was quite interesting and fascinating. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And what category do you fall under? And what generation were you born in? Let me know in the comments. All right, our next video is by the username at Ellie.Richard. Now they give us a little insight about what color that we choose to wear that reflects on how we want people to view us. So roll the clip. Did you know that the color of your clothes influences the way that people see and feel about you? Let me take you through some color psychology. Wear blue when you want others to see you as trustworthy, calm, responsible, and caring. Wear white when you want to feel and for others to see you as confident, balanced, positive, and independent basically for people to think you've got your shit together. Read to be associated with successful, passionate, self-assured, and bold. And green makes others see you as creative, selfless, generous, and caring for the environment. So that was pretty fascinating if you ask me. Now we love a little nuggets of knowledge over here on T with V, don't get me wrong. But ironically enough, the reason why I'm wearing this outfit is because I'm really obsessed with this show that I will tell you in the next segment about a certain character who wears this type of style. But I'm very inspired by um, uh, the gentleman who, again, we'll talk in the next segment. But um, yeah, let me know what colors that you like to wear and how you want people to see and feel about you when you wear them or you just wear them just to wear them, you know, like for me, listen it's all about wear p over here all right if i gotta i gotta find something that gets me through the day to keep me focused and in line and on on the on the vision and all of that so but i would love to know how you carry yourself when it comes to your fashion and the colors that you choose as well so let me know in the comments all right so we're going to be diving in into our next segment which i like to call what you watching now i gotta show now i gotta tell you a few shows that i've been watching that i've been thoroughly enjoying now my top two right now has been the watcher i burned through this series like nobody's business this is a really 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 great series i thoroughly enjoyed the suspense the thriller all of it i love the color 
coordination. I love the characters and how they play a very important role. And um, this was uh, written by Ryan Murphy and another gentleman of his. Uh, and this was actually based on a true story, obviously in the lens of Ryan Murphy. You know, you gotta add a little situationships to make it more interesting. But this is definitely a real story about a family moving into a house and they've been getting strange, 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 spooky, letters and uh, they're trying to figure out who is sending these letters so uh if you got netflix and make sure to watch it it is really good really really good have a snack with it ice cream or whatever you're gonna burn through it but the second show that i've been watching now is uh the new american horror story uh nyc season 11. now a quick side story about this. I was fortunate enough to uh, be a part of the promo shooting of uh, this season of American Horror Story. It was absolutely amazing to all the people who I met. Shout out to all of you. You were the most kind, loving, genuine, just overall beautiful souls. And, and I was so glad to connect with a lot of people in that project. And it was just so much fun. A, a lot of hours and a lot of waiting. But um, I'm so glad that I got to be a part of a very, 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 very um, collaborative artistic experience, you know, and it was a, it was a real thrill for me. But um, yeah, this new season, season 11, NYC American Horror Story, it is good. It is about, um, uh, and it's in, based in New York City and it's a bunch of uh, queer folks who are getting killed by this murderer um, and, and there's a disease going around. It's just so much and it is so good and I'm thoroughly impressed. Now, now don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of my, my people, my queer brothers and sisters and non conforming getting killed, but I do love me a murder mystery. I'm just gonna call a thing a thing. Now, the one character that I love from this show that I it was inspired to dress as today on this episode was this gentleman right here. Oh my goodness. Now his real name is Joe. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Joe, I'm obsessed with you. I love you and you inspired me to dress like you. Now Joe plays this journalist and he is so great. He's also in The Watcher as well and he's also in my favorite, favorite, favorite Ryan Murphy um, uh, show, which was called Hollywood. But I love, love, love you. And I love your acting and the way you carry yourself and your just your delivery and everything is just so good. And I would love to have dinner with this man just to talk creativity, his process, what he goes through and all of that. Um, but his character, I really, really dig. And, and I got inspired to dress like him. So um, overall, I love this show. I would recommend if you're into thrillers and murder mysteries and all of that, this is definitely both of these shows are for you. And um, the, uh, the American Horror Story though is on Hulu. So if you have Hulu, it's on there. And then The Watcher is streamed on Netflix. So go, th that's what I've been watching. All right, go check those shows out because they're, they're good. All right, so to close out in today's video, we are going to read the quote of the week. Oh yes, oh yes. All right, so this quote of the week is by Ryan Murphy, and he says this. For me, the saddest thing in the world is always lost potential. That is always the most heartbreaking thing when there's something left to be mended from a situation or a person that goes unexplored. That's a tragedy to me. And that was by Ryan Murphy. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you feel inspired. This is episode 11. You know, I love an 11. 11 is my favorite number, 11, 11, 22. But um, if you like what you see and you wanna become a Vomizer, head over to my website, vomilomusic.com, where anything and everything about me is on there except my birth certificate or social security number. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and share. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, all right? So you'll get updates on, you know, what we be doing and all of that. So please, be safe, sanctified, and sanitary under these self-reflecting times. And of course, I will catch you all in the next episode. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>